All right, everyone. Uh, I need to hop on this. I just got out of retreat, so <laughs> I'm running a little behind. And my visor is because there's a lot of sun, and uh, it glares in my eyes this time in the morning. So um, there was some new rules and regulations uh, that were approved for this year. Uh, we have to thank the United Spinal Association for that. Uh, so it's uh, so I wanted to present it here uh, so we can have it available and I will certainly leave the link so you can go to that section and, and read the regulations uh, so I know that the United Spinal Association has been you know working hard to improve uh, how we are um, treated and our wheelchairs are treated and everything else so this is what they were able to pass. <coughs> so it's official. We did it. <laughs> Our aspirations of flying the friendly skies unscathed are closer than ever to become a reality. So these are the new rules and regulations. Uh, it includes airports as well for accessibility. Um, and I have some suggestions here. But <laughs> all right. So this came out on May 20th, 2024 from the um, United Spinal Association. If you want to become a member, please do. Uh, any, any type of um, back issues or walking issues or disability of that type uh, will fit in here. Uh, so become a member so you can get some news and, and be updated. So President Biden signed the Bipartisan Federal Aviation Administration reauthorization bill on May 16th. So this is the FAA. This law will implement programs and standards to improve aviation safety and strengthen protections for disabled passengers and uh, airline workers. So we need both. The law authorizes more than $105 billion in funding for the FAA <coughs> and 738 million for the National Transportation Safety Board from now through September 2028. So it needs to be renewed and funding will be needed and you'll hear why in a few seconds. So after many months of debate and short term extensions on Capitol Hill, because I kept on having to extend it, you know, minute by minute and month by month. <laughs> along with uh, a lot of advocacy from United Spinal and other members of the disability community, the new law includes multiple provisions that make it safer and easier for disabled passengers to travel by air. And it includes the following. Tra training requirements as a uh, refresher training every 18 months, and that's for the staff, especially because they're handling us or picking us up, helping us move, so um, and trans transferring. So that training will be every 18 months. Analyzing and improving the Department of Transportation DOT complaint process and funding. So that's been a little complicated for us, so they want to make it easier and more direct. Um, let me see. Analyzing and improving. Yeah, we got that. Addressing the need for more access standards and accessibility of in-flight entertainment. So a lot of us, for um, because we're hearing impaired, we can't use the screen and watch their movies and things like that because our apparatuses don't connect and there's no um, we've been fighting for, um, what you call it, captioning. So captioning is one thing, and then, of course, uh, those who have problems with dexterity have issues using it. So, so that, that needs to be um, worked on. So uh, improve access to airline website applications and information uh, communication technologies increasing access to seating accommodations. The, so this has to do with giving us more room for us to have priority to the bulkhead area. So, 
so that it without it having to pay and all that kind of stuff. So uh, continued study into safe and secure in in cabin wheelchair tie down system. So this is happening in the universities and a couple of universities and a big team doing that right now. But also we have Delta in the UK who is also working on it. So whoever comes out first on top, <laughs> we'll go with it. So uh, I did a video on the UK and Delta working on uh, their model because I already had a model. They presented it. They're testing it right now. And the next thing is that they need to get a certificate of approval from their government. So we're waiting for that. And that should come out in the next uh, five months. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, the need for the DOT to perform more in-depth analysis of airline uh, reported mishandling of wheelchair data. So we're trying to keep track of that because that is so annoying and so problematic that um, it, it's, it's very problematic. I don't have to go into the details of that. You've probably had that issue yourself. Reauthorization of the Air Carrier Access Act Advisory Committee. Uh, a requirement for the ACAA, which is the Air Carrier uh, Committee, to ensure safe transport for assistive devices powered by lithium ion batteries. The inclusion of prior grant program, uh, increased airport accessibility, uh, new requirement uh, requirements related to the availability of onboard wheelchairs, uh, expansion of the Advanced Materials Center of Excellence to address safe and accessible air travel for passengers with disabilities, uh, the creation of service, service animal pilot program. So that's been a little bit of an issue because <laughs> what is a service animal, how to spot them, you know, the ESA animals, uh, emotional service animals, you know, shouldn't have approval. There's some difficulty with all that. So in the training, you know, it, I, I get it. It's really hard. So the ESA service animals are trying to say that they have um, they have access to the air, air flying with them, just like the uh, service dogs. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know. Um, I would have to look that one up. I don't think they do. Uh, but for the employees, especially, to be able to spot a real service animal, and uh, be able to not decline them because that's happened several times in which a service animal has been declined uh, in, in, uh, to be able to fly. So that's why they went to uh, the creation of a service animal pilot program. So whether it's training staff or you know um, touching base with a lot of people who have service animals so they uh, have access to practice with their service animal and flying. Uh, many of the above provisions uh, were included in the Air Carrier Access Amendment Act, uh, a bill prior prioritized by United Spinal, S United Spinal Association. Sign up for uh, the newsletter. So you can sign up for the newsletter to continue to get. But these are real re regulations that have been approved. And so overall, this is to improve, you know, staff working with us. This is to improve our safety, you know, for them not to break our wheelchairs, please. <laughs> and if when they pick this up to get over that transition between the airplane and the walkway, uh, somehow to do it much better. <laughs> when I complained about my situation when I was coming back from Canada, I really said to the girl, I said, go back to the drawing board because it's really dangerous for staff to pick up anybody. I don't care how little they weigh or how much they weigh, but you know, there's got to be some kind of bridge, some kind of uh, some kind of bridge that they can put over that um, that separation between the plane and the walkway so they don't have to pick us up. So, um, and that's where I was dropped <laughs> in the back of the wheelchair. It was very painful. Uh, 
you know, and I, I just blasted him for that. Um, I'm not looking. I never look for uh, a lawsuit because that just doesn't get anything fixed. Uh, what gets something fixed is retraining, and I say go back to the drawing board, get some kind of bridge that you can use uh, to get over the transition between the aircraft and the walkway. That's really what we need, and uh, hopefully somebody will have the courage to uh, design something that will be supportive of the wheelchair um, going between those transitions, and nobody has to pick us up again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's my call out. So that you know, that's one of the things that's pretty dangerous of them picking us up. Uh, it's very difficult to pick up any kind of human being. I don't care how much they weigh or they don't weigh, but you know, picking up a human being uh, to get them over a transition or to get them in to a seat is very precarious, and I worry about you know, the employees, because they could hurt themselves and they could hurt us, and they have. So <coughs> how are we going to do this better? So this, this, these rules and regulations are pointing out that, you know, there has to be some different training, so training requirements. Re and as refresher, you know, training every 18 months, including hands-on training for assisting passengers with limited mobility and properly stowing assistive devices. So let's see what happens with all of this, but just know that this is uh, uh, a new rule and hopefully it'll put more pressure on all of us to, to do better and for them to do better, for the staff, the pilots, the, the the air carrier people storing our wheelchairs and getting us into the plane. And hopefully, <coughs> you know, according to the United States, you know, in our investigation of being able to bring our wheelchairs onto the plane, um, that that's going to take another two to three years. And I'm hoping it's much quicker than that, truly. <laughs> We've been waiting this for this for years. So I'm really hoping that Delta comes out with their model approved from the UK. I'm hoping that the United States hurries up with getting us um, a spot in the plane so we can just take our wheelchair. We don't have to move anywhere. Nobody has to pick us up. <coughs> Sorry about that. Nobody has to pick us up ever again. <laughs> and we could just roll onto the plane. But for that, we're, we're going to need a bridge. Um, everybody needs to remember there's a transition between the plane and, and, and the walkway. And so how do we get over that? You know, our wheelchairs do not have wings. <laughs> and so we need to figure that one out. And uh, I ask the engineers to truly go back to the drawing board and figure out uh, <coughs> some kind of bridge that we can walk over or a drive over so that nobody has to pick us up. Nobody, you know, our wheels don't get stuck between the plane and the walkway. <laughs> and so we really, I don't think anybody thought of that. I think a lot of people are just excited about saying, you know, let's, let's allow the wheelchairs to get onto the plane. And it's like, yeah, that's really exciting. That's really important. But how do we do that? How do we do that? So is there going to be like a little, are they going to do it from the back of the plane? Are they going to do it from the front of the plane? Is there going to be like a lift? Um, is it going to be a lift? Is it going to be a bridge? What's, what's the scoop? So that I want to see out in public. I want to see that one written up and explained to us because it's very exciting to be able to drive my wheelchair onto the plane. The question is, how? <laughs> I have a big how there because there is a uh, difficult transition. You know, when you're walking, you can just step over into the plane. But when you're in your wheelchair, how do you get over, you know, that the walkway between the walkway and the, and the airplane? How are we going to do that? 
So that's a big question, and I throw it out there for the engineers in the airports, the engineers in the airlines, to United Spinal Association, how will we do that piece? Um, <coughs> I think we're all experts of driving our wheelchairs and getting around and turning around and be able to back up into the section that they will reserve for us to unbuckle us down. That I have no, no doubt, but I do have some questions about how, how <laughs> we're gonna get our wheelchairs into the plane. So uh, that's a big one, but I'm sure they're investigating and I'm begging the uh, engineers to not forget about that piece and to develop some kind of methodology uh, to <laughs> be able to keep us safe when we are getting into the plane. If you have a manual wheelchair, it's a little different because you can pick up your wheels and um, get them over the hump there. But for power wheelchairs, we can't do that. So, so let's see what they come up with. Um, I will probably send a note or a reminder to uh, the, the spinal, uh, United Spinal Association about that and see what has been cooked up, what has been thought about. So I don't wanna drag this on. Uh, I just read to you the new regs and this came out um, May 20th, 2024. So let's hope all things, let's see what we notice that's different. Let's, let's hope that things are a little bit better than they have been, and that they can figure out how to keep our wheelchair safe, keep us safe, and um, that you know, nobody has to be dropped again. <laughs> it was extremely painful for when I was dropped. And um, I'm not gonna say what airlines, you know, they, they received my report, they received my comments, and I said, this is what I want. I don't want a lawsuit, I want this to be uh, improved. And for that, for the dropping of people, never happen again. And we, we just went through all this. We just went through all these meetings and look what happened. So, huh. <laughs> so anyway, those are the issues that we're dealing with. We have new regs. So let's see what we notice when, when we have to fly. So, but any questions, any comments? Um, I plead with you to, you know, if you have a, you, you have a use of a wheelchair, uh, part-time, full-time, uh, please consider signing up for the United Spinal Association in which you can get, you know, newsletters and up-to-dates and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I'm glad to be back and I'm glad to have thrown this video out there. I'm probably going to post it today because this is really important for all of us. And so, let's see. Let's see what we can see and hopefully things will get better one day at a time. All right, take care, and I, will, I won't forget the link so you can take care, can, so you can take care, so you can look and watch the video, uh, not the video, it doesn't have a video, but it does have, you know, the, the script. Uh, and maybe the association, the Spinal Association put something out there, uh, but I will check, and if they have a, a short video on it, I will post that as well. All right, take care, and I will see you in the next one.